Hello, how are you doing? This is Danny Nova calling in. Oh, hey Danny, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing great. Thank you for calling in. In case you guys didn't hear it, Danny Nova from CBSSports.com, head senior writer, baseball. Really excited to have you here. Thank you for calling in. Good to, good to be with you tonight. All right. Um, I think we should start with the topic that everyone's talking about right now. How much do you think Albert Pujols' injury is going to affect the St. Louis Cardinals? Oh, it affects them greatly because uh, Albert Pujols, when he's right, is uh, the best player in baseball, best offensive force. And, and now they don't have him for quite a while. And not only don't they have him for quite a while, but we don't even know. With a, with an injury near the wrist, we don't even know once he comes back how strong his wrist is going to be and how much uh, of a power threat he'll be. Uh, the way Alba works, with the, knowing how he does things, I think we will see him come back to be a real threat by the end of the season. But in a division that is a very tight division, uh, this is a type of injury that could make a huge difference. And, and it's something now... The, the Cardinals already had to overcome Adam Wainwright, losing him at the start of the year. They've had to overcome some other injuries. But this is a huge one. This is the biggest one they've had to overcome. May, maybe even bigger than Wainwright, even though uh, losing a 20-game winner for your, the whole season is, is, is quite a big one. Too. So you do you think that this could just absolutely blast the Cardinals out of the playoffs? It could. Sure it could. It's a close division, and there's no guarantee – there, look, there was no guarantee they would win the division even with Albert Pujols healthy. And without him, it's going to be a little tougher for them. It doesn't mean they can't do it. Uh, they, they're a very tough team. Uh, Tony LaRusse is a very good manager, and they still have quite a bit of talent. But it, there's no question that it makes it more difficult for them. It, it, you, can't, you can't argue otherwise. It obviously makes it more difficult. I completely agree with you, and... Um... I as well am very worried about the wrist injury. As we know, wrists, um, they don't heal as well as we would like them to. So I hope to see Albert Pujols back to uh, full force the year. Um, let's talk a little bit of trades. Um, are you being, uh, what are you hearing about Jose Reyes and uh, Albert Pujols and whether or not they might, um, they might leave at the end of the year contracts are up? Well, uh, Jose Reyes uh, is going to be a free agent at the end of the year, and in fact today his agent told the Mets that he doesn't want to negotiate a new contract during the season. Jose Reyes said again today, as he said all along, that his preference would be to remain with the Mets, but the great expectation is that the Mets won't have enough money to uh, to bid as high as it's going to take to sign Jose Reyes. And I think it's very likely that Jose Reyes would be playing elsewhere next year. Whether he'll get traded this year, the Mets are saying right now that there's no great urgency to trade him and they'd be very happy to keep him through the season. Uh, but uh, I, I'm sure there will be offers made for Jose Reyes, and I wouldn't be at all surprised if someone made an offer that might tempt the Mets to take, to, to uh, take it. Now, the big question is the Mets played pretty well, can they stay in close enough in the race that they would not want to trade Reyes? So Sandy Alderson said that it's not so much with Reyes an issue of how well they play, but I, I think it has to be to a certain extent, and we're just going to have to watch. With Albert Pujols, look, I've always thought that most likely situation is he comes remains in St. Louis and resigns. It's certainly not definite, but I do think that that's the most likely situation. Uh, they have a great desire to keep him. He likes it there. They're going to have to come up with the money, but I think there's a real chance that they will. All right, and if you if you have the choice to put Jose Reyes on any team, best fit, where would you put him? You mean what team needs him the most? Uh, what do you think has like a roster spot available and they can put him on and benefit greatly from him? Look, he could help a whole bunch of teams right now. The, the, there's no question that teams like the Giants or the Reds, teams that haven't gotten as much offense out of uh, shortstop, could, could 
really be helped by it. But, but the way Jose Reyes is playing right now, he could help just about any team in baseball. So uh, it, it's a question of what whether there's a team that feels strong enough about it and is willing to part with enough talent to tempt them that's the move. And, and, and it's hard to say whether what that team would be and, and whether any team would, will end up doing it. All right. Thank you. And um, I think topic our main overlying topic of the day um, is what do you think the uh, the MLB needs to change most? Whether it be the MLB draft and making it more exciting, uh, making a DH all around the MLB, or taking out the DH entirely. You were bud feeding today, and you can make one change. What would it be? I don't. I don't know that there are great changes that need to be made. I think they do need to make some changes with the schedule. The schedule has to be, or should be, more equitable. Part of that is changing interleague play some. And one of the uh, possibilities, and I've come around on this. I was not a supporter of it, but I am now is to move one team from the National League to the American League and go with two 15-team leagues and six five-team divisions. And I, I think that if you do that and if you do it right, you can make the schedule more equitably, make the schedule work better and work better for the teams and for the fans. And so I, I, think, it's, I, I think if I could do one thing, that's probably what I would do right now. You realign the MLB, and um, I, I was hearing that um, likely it'll be um, it'll be the Houston Astros that will change leagues. Is that, is that well, true? Well, I, 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 look, there are many possibilities, and I don't know if you can say it at this point. It's likely that any team will, but if you were looking for a team to change, the Astros would be an obvious team because of, for two reasons. One, the inequity right now in the divisions is that the National League Central has six teams and the American League West has four teams. The simplest way to change that would be to move one team from the National League Central to the American League West. If you wanted to do that, the team that's easiest to move would be the Houston Astros. Why? Because there's another team in Texas that is in the American League West. It would give you two Texas teams in the American League West, along with the, the uh, three teams on the West Coast, the two California teams and the Seattle Mariners. It's not a perfect solution, but it gives you, for scheduling purposes, a real some real advantages. There are other teams that you could move. Uh, people have suggested the Arizona Diamondbacks. People have suggested the Florida Marlins. I've had people suggest to me, although I don't think people in baseball have talked about it as much, the Milwaukee Brewers, who already are the only team that moved to change leagues. But in any of those other cases, you would also have to move another team because none of those teams are in the National League Central. None of, uh, well, the, the Brewers are. The Brewers are in the Central, but they would not move to the American League West. That would be way out of the way for them. That wouldn't be any geographic advantage. So, None of those teams could do exactly what you could do with the Astros. So they are the most logical team. That doesn't mean they're the team that has to move, and it doesn't mean that any team will move. The Astros have said they don't want to move. Their fans have been fairly vocal in saying they don't want the Astros to move. So it's very possible that nothing will happen on that. And and that's going to be discussed. It's going to be discussed all along. There are certainly pros and cons to it. But that's what I believe is best. I would agree with you. I think the realignment would um, make for uh, more exciting, more exciting games, and um, I think the Astros would be a good fit to change. And um, something that hasn't been answered very often: um, what do we see as a timetable for the uh, MLB realignment? Are we in two or three years, or are we talking five? No, you're talking. You're talking sooner than that if something were to happen. Uh, the, the, look, if it, if anything is going to happen, the decision will be made this summer or into the uh, fall as they discuss the basic 
disagreement between the players and owners. So we will know by the end of this year whether we're going to see that or not because it's something that the players are negotiating with the owners. So it'll happen or it won't. Uh, it's not. It, now, it doesn't necessarily have to happen immediately, but it, we're not talking about something with six, seven years down the road or even three, four years down the road. If they're going to decide it, they're going to decide it now. All right. And um, closing question, and I will let you go. Um, thoughts on Bud Sealing and whether he will remain commissioner after this year? Uh, great question. Uh, nobody knows the Bud. Bud has always said he would retire at the end of this contract. But uh, the way Bud is going, as strong as he's going, it's very hard to see him leaving right now. So I don't know that that will happen, but it's very easy to see Bud stand around. All right. Thank you, Dan. I appreciate a lot you calling in. Um, hope you had a good time on my show, and uh, hopefully uh, we'll talk to you soon on the show. Okay. Thanks very much. All right. Thank you.